is enough and it's time for a change. Are you ready? It is Sunday and you're listening to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. Let's give it a hell yeah. Oh, yeah. With Kenny Killer. Hey, yo. We're in the big, big life, baby. And we are live. Woo. I'm the Gaudem Sugar Shoe. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Because that's the bottom line. The stone, the center. Oh, son of a bitch, if you heard... The Glass Shatter, that's right, it's the Sunday Survey Wrestling Podcast episode 125 right here on VOC Nation. And I am the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the one man with no Instagram, Kimmy Killer. And as always, usually I'm kicking it with the Gadam Sugar Shugs, you know his situation, he'll be back. Don't worry, he's acting like Mel Gibson from Braveheart, he'll be back, he's in a battle, don't worry about that shit. But we do have someone on the show to help me out. It's none other than the Butcher 69 himself, Mr. David Gillam. Hello, everybody. I told you I creep into people's rooms. <laughs> yeah, that's just not creepy at all, is it? <laughs> oh, man. The last time we were together, we caused havoc, so I have to get you on the show, bro. <laughs> How you been, man? I'm good, my brother. I'm good. I'm good. Beat up. Beat up. Listening to everyone's podcast, <laughs> doing the Max Wrestling podcast, and now I'm privileged to be here with you. Hey, well, well thanks a lot. Thanks, well, thanks for agreeing to come on. Um, celebrated a birthday the other day, did you? Got a bit messy? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm getting too old. I'm getting too old. The bruises the bruises show up even, even more. The pain when you fall through someone's fences, even more. Oh my god, enough said. As soon as you say four through fences, we know what type of night it is. We know. <laughs> <laughs> but he lived to tell the story, so it's all good. It's all good. The butcher is here. So, um, you had a good weekend. That's great. Um, you, what wrestling are you watching at the moment? Um, I'm trying to watch anything and everything, if you know what I mean. Um, obviously, you do, you do WWE, NXT, I watch TNA, I, I watch um, ROH, I watch when I can find a link to stream. Um, I've watched quite a bit, to be honest with you, um, of the first season of Lucha Underground nice. over the past week or so. And wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's all I can say is wow. It's a different um, product altogether, isn't it? I want to watch quite, I want to get into New Japan. I'm honest, um, you know, this, uh, I've not watched enough, and, you know, I was listening to, I watched one of your podcasts the other day just to refresh me, refresh myself <laughs> on how it was going to work and, you know, flow and stuff like that, and, wow, you watched some old Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, New Japan, man, seconds know that I, I bloody, I preach this shit, like, it's yeah. just... Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I'm quite big on uh, Tanahashi. Um, I remember, I think it wasn't he, it wasn't he the youngest ever world champion in uh, New Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy's amazing. I mean, obviously, he had a stint in T- uh, TNA. Oh you, mean, oh, you mean Okada? Yeah, he had a stint in TNA, didn't he? Mm-hmm. With, I think it was when they had the, obviously, they were doing all that work when Jeff Jarrett was there and their links with, his links with New Japan. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that, but I think it was part, he was part of the X Cup or whatever it was called at the time. Yeah, his name was um, oh, what was his name? It was Okado, something yeah. like that. Yeah, Okado, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but he's I mean he's turning stuff around, and they've got some really really good wrestlers. Um. I mean the pay per views are just immense, man. They just they've got at least five matches on the pay per view, which are just five star matches. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you if you get a chance um, and you want to check out the G1, I know it's finished today. I don't know the the results, so no spoilers, no spoilers. But if you do want to check out the G1, um, I'll send you the link and you can watch yeah, every bro. day and catch up. Yeah, man. Um, I'll be very very interested. All right. Well, let's get into the show. Um, Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast right here on VOC Nation. Um, check us out our website, the Sunday Segway Podcast. 
dot uh, wicks dot com forward slash Sunday Segway. Also um, follow us on Twitter. That's at Sunday Segway. Spelled S E G U E. Uh, like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on iTunes, Podomatic, Stitcher, and don't forget to download that Double Twist Player. Player. Okay. So we're gonna go to shout outs right now. Again, as we usually do. If I can't fit you all in, sorry about your damn luck, but I will fit you in next time. So let's go to the seconds. Want to give a shout out to Pro Wrestling Fans Podcast. Uh, Rick Anderson, Preston Black, Matt Riviera, Bullsworth Longfellow. <laughs> Rocket Wrestling, Mark Maverick, The Express Network, shout out to all the peeps, and PCW Training Academy. Um, also, Swerve Talk ne- um, Network, you know? You know who you is. We're often coming out here. Um, David, you got any shout outs? Uh, yeah, I'd like to tell everyone um, about Max Wrestling's uh, Max Wrestling Shop, uh, .com. Um, it's obviously a new new thing that they've brought in. Loads of new T-shirts on there. Loads of T-shirts. Oh, right. them, them, own, boys, them boys <laughs> are branching out. <laughs> You've got your own one, haven't you? Yes, I have. But you're 69. Buy it. I will find you. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be surprised to find some Segway T-shirts running up in there soon. So don't you worry about that shit. You, you know you you know the catchphrases, dog. You know the catchphrases. <laughs> um, I want to I want to give my normal shoutouts. Obviously, Max Wrestling, our business partners in crime. Go to maxwrestling.wix.com forward slash Max Wrestling. They have got all our latest um, interviews with the best professional ref- wrestlers um, in the world today. Theo Trinidad and also past WWE super, superstar Kevin Thorne. So make sure you check that out. Give a shout out to Offshoot Radio, the Pigeon Patrol. You know who you are. We'll give a shout out there <laughs> also a uh, podcast about nothing and kings of the ring podcast also want to give a shout out to my boys on the state side that's um badass wrestling podcast nick and steve i will be joining them next week on their show um we're going to be previewing SummerSlam, so make sure you check that ish out okay impressions time dave yeah uh, this is the first time you've been on the show this is it, man. So, um, can you it. please... When I was born for this. <laughs> can you please give us your best Macho Man impression, please? What's this? It's going to go. I was going to go. Oh, yeah. The Macho Man Reddy Savage is on the Sunday Segway with his boy, Kenny Killer. Oh, yeah. Freak out, freak out. Dig it. <laughs> that was sick. I give that an 8.5, bro. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Can you let the um seconds know your favorite current wrestler and your favorite all time wrestler? Uh, my all time favorite wrestler is probably Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, and my current favorite wrestler, I've got to go with Dean Ambrose. Uh, just because he's a bit crazy. I just like me. Better than Luke Cannon. Oh god. Okay, I like the I like those choices. That's cool. That's cool. Um, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask you to take part in the ten count a little bit later, just like the rest of the guests do. Yeah. So um, we'll get to that. But let's get into raw. Let's kick it in. Uh, Rawlins started off raw. Um, I thought it was it's a lot better for Rawlins' character to start raw by himself without the yeah. authority. I mean, do you definitely. agree with that? Oh, definitely. I mean, I personally, I, I mean, I don't like this whole authority thing. I kind of think it's all, it's slowed down. I mean, okay, the guy's got the title, but I do think it's slowed down his momentum as showing him as a pure athlete, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, I definitely don't think it's done him any favours being aligned with the authority. Um, well, obviously, I hope now that that's kind of that's the thing, obviously fading out. Um, and we'll just see. We'll, we'll let Seth do his own work because I mean, there's no, there's no doubt that the guy is probably. I, I well, I think he's the best mm-hmm. at, at this current time, easily. I mean, he's running that chicken shit hill thing, you know. Um, and it, I don't, I just don't like it. It don't seem well. It seems like he should be doing a lot more, and he should be a lot more backing. I mean, we've seen in the past Orton doing that chicken shit hill thing, and again, it didn't work mm-hmm. for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Maybe we'll see something different with Rawlins. Hopefully, um, you know, cu- uh, up and coming. The 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 Cena nose break did wonders for him. I thought. I mean, do you think that um, obviously it's this it's this nasty thing that whoever gets aligned with Triple H. 
Triple H still comes out as the top guy. Mm-hmm. Even though he's not got his wrestling tights on or his wrestling pants on anymore, he's in a suit. He's still got to be that number one guy in every promo, in every situation. You just said it then at the nail right on the head. Randy Orton suffered, suffered in that position. And these are guys that have got the world title. They are the top guy, but they're still not the top guy when you're aligned with Triple H. Mm. I just don't get it. Yeah, he needs to be str- they need to be strong, and they need to be strong by themselves, and just let the authority be the authority. And if they favour the hills, fuck it. If they don't, yeah. they don't. But just separate them. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, for the rest of this, um, we had Cesaro come out. Love that. That it was him that come out. Fans, Cesaro section out there strong. Um, I love that. And then obviously was followed by uh, Kevin Owens. And then Orton came out. What's your thoughts on the Cesaro section at the moment? Because you know it I seems like guy. someone's out there pushing the you know Cesaro section. The guys we've got like seven thousand signs, making sure yeah. he's handing them out. Um, it's it's about time for Cesaro now, isn't it? I think I mean you know when you asked for a question a, minute, a while ago, um, who were my favourite wrestlers? Cesaro was the very very close. You know what I mean to, to Dean Ambrose in my opinion. I mean I've watched a lot of Cesaro. Um, over the years when he was Claudio Castagnoli mm-hmm. in ROH uh, with Chris Hero um, and that guy he's, he's pure he's, he's as pure as you're going to get in a wrestler um, you know I, I think he, he, his promos aren't as good as they should be right now where he is in the business and his, you know, his status and all that sort of stuff but I kind of like it because he's meant to be smug yeah. I like that. I like that smugness in him. Um but I mean, as far as over, that guy has waited for his chance and now he's got it. I mean you can't touch the guy at the minute. You just you just can't. Um I just hope it's not one of these Dean Ambrose situations oh. where he's, he's gonna fade out and then come back in and then fade out and come back in and he's just like why? Why you know I, mean? I don't get it. Oh, it's because I was being eating a shit sandwich, man. That's what he's been eating. And he's yeah, had definitely. to fucking swallow that shit down slowly. And he's waited. And now he's got his chance. And hopefully a feud with Kevin Owens would just bring that, you know, out of him. Um, I think it will anyway. Oh, that could be match of the year. Um, do you think WWE took a shot at um, Kevin Owens by allowing Orton to come out and say, oh, have you put on weight? I think that was a disgrace, in my opinion. Mm. I didn't. I didn't like that. There's a few things that WWE have done over the past few weeks. Um, you know, with the airing of uh, the Divas uh, ganging up on Eva Marie, which I didn't particularly like. Storyline non-scripted or whatever it was. I, you know, that sort of thing to me interprets bullying. Um, and for a company that's supposed to be anti-bullying, you know, it it, it, it didn't look good from 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 you know from a televised point of view. Mm-hmm. And then this thing with with Kevin Owens. I mean. <laughs> has Randy Orton watched this guy's work over the past six years? <laughs> has, he, has he really paid attention to what this big guy that's had a you know a bit of weight on him has been doing in ROH while Randy Orton's been carrying Triple H's bags? Exactly. Come on, Randy. Jesus <laughs> Christ, you couldn't live with this guy in all in ROH. Uh, Kevin Owens, man. I know apparently the dirt sheets they're a bit split on him at the moment in terms of some are waiting for him to fail and some are waiting for him to prevail. And I think he'll prevail. I think um, the you know his feud with Cena has pushed him to a point where you know he's gonna be that guy that's gonna definitely reach the top. And he's gonna he's such a good heel. Oh, he's brilliant. He's such fantastic. a good heel. I mean, um, I got to the point over the last few weeks, as I said, I think I said it on Max Wrestling the other week, where I'm starting to turn off when he's actually cutting a promo. Mm-hmm. Um, because part of it, it, it irritates me. <laughs> he's playing that character that you just meant to freaking just hate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he does it so well. But the thing is, he's... he's that, that character, this is how I, how I look at it. He is Stone Cold Steve Austin to a T. What you see is the man himself being himself. That is the same guy as he was in ROH. And I think that's credit to himself. That's credit to him. The WWE are actually giving him, letting him be himself. That shows just how good you are and how highly regarded you are as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, credit to him, I say. He's got it, man. He's got it. Um, 
All right, let's move on from this because what happened after this is they uh, Triple H comes out as he would do, and he would say there was going to be a uh, triple threat match to Serban who's going to face Rollins for the title at the end of the night. After this was um, Team Bad versus Team Bella. Now, Gillam, right? Team Bad. They operate so well compared to, I think anyway, compared to the, all the other um, teams. I mean, your PCBs and your Team Bellas. Because they have this attitude. you got yeah. Tamina that just not, don't say shit. Do a Brock Lesnar. Don't say nothing. Just don't say nothing. That's and, good, yeah. You know, and um, Sasha Banks, what can I say? I mean, what's your thoughts, man? Queen of Wrestling. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Sasha Banks is Queen of Wrestling. That, that girl... Is, oh, seriously. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I, I respect you know, the writers of the WWE. I, I, I get inflated all the time. But that person that was standing there, you know, that day when she aligned herself with Summer Rae and Charlotte as the BFFs, you know, someone actually looked and thought, oh, we got, we got to split this group up. Because mm-hmm. that girl is shining. She needs to be given her chance. I mean, talk you about know. characters, man. Talk about characters. Like, she owns that. Like, she yeah. owns it. Yeah. Oh, well, she, she, um, she's Snoop Dogg's niece, isn't she? Uh, cousin. That's it, yeah. But you can just see. It, 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 it shows it. He's the same sort of, <laughs> yeah. you know, you mess with me type of thing. I'll come down on you. She's got the swag, man. She's got the swag. She's brilliant. She's absolutely, she looks good. Mm-hmm. She's just brilliant. And if anything, they owe me. It's oh. flourished through it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You can just see it. I mean, them two really, I mean, in all honesty, they, they were kind of faded. Mm-hmm. And as Naomi does, I mean, I'm not going to knock Naomi's wrestling ability as well, but sometimes you just you just don't buy this bad, badass attitude, girl. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? One minute she's just following the ho- Usos up the ramp. Yeah, wearing wearing a t-shirt. The next minute she's coming out and she's like, "Ooh, I, you know, I'm gonna kick your ass." You know, I'm I'm a bitch. You're not. No, man, you're not really. Are you? <laughs> you're not. You know, no. look at the boots you're wearing. <laughs> but I kind of love this bad thing. I really, I love the old thing. I mean, I've been a major critic over the past, you know, few months of women's wrestling in general, and mm-hmm. uh, not so much NXT, but just the Divas Division. Yeah. Yeah, I even what hate. I even. Say? I even hate calling it divas. I still call it women. But I mean, this match anyway. This match was all right for what it was. I mean, we've had better matches on Raw. Um, you know, including the Divas Revolution. But teams PCB. Obviously, we've had a name change for obvious reasons. Um, and these guys were on commentary, and it was shit. That's all I can say. They didn't add any. They didn't add anything. Charlotte and Becky Lynch didn't say nothing. No. Um, and this was their ideal time, especially for Becky Lynch to show, you know, what she's all about. Um, I think, they, did they play the video package for Charlotte later? Yeah. 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 Um, which was good. I like the video package. So it means we'll get one probably tomorrow on Raw for, for Becky. But, um, yeah, man, these guys, they were shit on commentary. Oh, they were terrible. I mean, they even got to the point, you know, when they obviously you had the face off at the end type of thing. They kind of like, did you, you notice when they came off the commentary table, they stood there as if to say, where's that cue to get in the ring? <laughs> and I'm like, are you going to get in the ring or what? Because like, took, they took two steps forward and then they were like, oh, whoa, wait, 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 wait. we got to wait for the Bellas to get in first, you know what I mean, type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. It's, I don't know. I kind of worry with the old Becky Lynch thing, if I'm honest. I don't think Becky Lynch is ready. You, you don't think uh, she's ready? No. No. See, I From a wrestling it. point of view, she is. Mm-hmm. I, do, I just think she's going to struggle from an, a from a point of view where it's the, the look is fantastic. Mm. The look is fantastic. It's almost like Mad Max. Okay, you so do you think do you think she should have stayed on NXT and stopped and had and long. had a feud with with Bailey then basically? Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I, re- I really do because I just think I just think it's better for her. I mean, um, it's it's good for the, it's good for the women's wrestling in general that, that they're all up there and they're having this view because if anything they're getting the, be- the best spots on Raw at the minute as well mm-hmm. um, but I just think in the long run she's going to fade okay okay no no I, I no I, I agree to an extent definitely to an extent definitely it will, probably would have been better for because the thing is having them all come up at once it's yeah. going to affect some of them it's three is a weird yeah. number it's going to affect exactly. some of them you know um, exactly. and she's getting the front of it at the moment um 
all right let's move on from this let's go on to the new day right because the new day are one of the best things on wwe tv at the moment right now in my opinion <laughs> these guys look at the character rejuvenation of kofi this, oh, exa- this guy is coming out uh-huh. clapping like fucking skipping looking as funny as fuck and then you've got big e dancing fucking gyrating <laughs> like <laughs> and xavier woods man outside of the ring this guy he knows how to get um to push that heel character and get that heat man yeah definitely definitely the guy who's always been a good worker though xavier mm. woods you know, even when he was in tna with consequences creed <laughs> yeah um Hence, you mentioned that on your last podcast, the guy making his debut at uh, NXT TakeOver. Mm-hmm. That kind of made me laugh cause with, with him basically having that link to uh, the old Creed thing, and then I just kind of thought, oh, they've done it again. Yeah. And it just <laughs> fell on me consequences, Creed, and I was like, oh, no, they've done it again. <laughs> They're going to get bashed by TNA fans everywhere. Here. Oh, shit. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I, I can't agree with you any, any, enough on the new day, to be honest with you. I mean, I'd love to see him, you know, win them tag team titles, but make them a triple triple title and make them make, bring in and just another title so they can all wear it. I think that would be uh, fantastic. That would be great. All right, so how do you reckon they did it then? How do you reckon they turned it around? Because when they started, there were faces and they were getting booed. So how I do you think that, they turned it around? Um, I actually, I don't think they changed... A, a lot to be honest with you in the way that they do things I mean they're still smiling and they clap you know type of thing um I mean I read something the other day obviously Vince McMahon wasn't happy with the way direction they were going and he took away and taken off TV um I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall with them three in his office because there's no doubt he pulled them into the office and said right you're going to do this you got to do this um I got to be honest. When when they first did the the old faction thing, um, I was a bit worried because I was just like, oh, what are they doing? Oh, they're just making them into like a gospel choir type of, you know what I mean, type of thing. And I just thought, you know, that there's, there's people in this world, right, that are cruel, and the comments on shit that they totally don't understand. You know, and I can't, that's what I, that's what worried me about it. Um, but God, man, they're they're fantastic. They, yeah. they they put a smile on my face when when <laughs> I see them coming down. You know what I mean? You got a guy big east size, and the guy is skipping. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And when they, when they did the prime time players thing the other week, the millions of dollars, the three yeah. of them, that creased me. Uh, I tell you what, it's Kofi for me, man. It's his. It's when he, as soon as he comes down the ramp and he does this one pose, he tilts his head to the side, he looks down, he's smiling, and he's just clapping, <laughs> skipping. Down. Uh, it's great, man. It's great. I, it's, go on. No, go on, no, no, it's fine. Finish. The thing with Ki- the thing with Kofi with me is I remember a feud um, a fair few years ago now with Randy Orton, and you've seen you know which one I'm on you know, when when mm-hmm. he did the uh, you know when he put Randy through a table yeah no nine um I thought then that we were going to see you know possibly a world champion out of him I mm-hmm. really did because there's no doubt in the guy's ability to work he's solid he is solid. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a very unorthodox style. He's very, very... I, I, I compare him to CM Punk, in a way, you know. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what you mean. I know that, I know... Uh, yeah, I know what you mean by that. I you know what you mean by that. But we don't want to get into the political thing, reasons oh, to no. why he's not a world champion, no, why no. he's not been given a yeah. chance, because I firmly agree... That that's exactly why. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. But we'll 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 leave Hogan for that shit. Um, <laughs> Hogan. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> <laughs> 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 um, all right. So let's move on. Um, so we had the triple threat match. We had Owens, um, Orton, and Cesaro. Now, I thought the match was really, really well booked. Um, I thought that they all looked strong, especially Cesaro. Cesaro. Even though Cesaro has been taking the pins and so on and so on, he has shone so much over the last three weeks with these matches, don't you think? I think so. I think so. I think, I think, I think it's kind of... Um, they're almost giving him a free, uh, you know, a free reign. Just, just go out there and do what you're going to do because at the end of the day... You know, you're in the ring with these guys and you know, you're, you're all more than capable of creating your own match 
you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I just think I just think the whole thing uh, with uh, over the past few weeks with Rollins, Owens, it's just it's just it's just making the guy look where you know how he should look. I I used to be critical critic of Orton man. I used to fucking fucking bland just like bloody robot just doing the same yeah. thing he wasn't evolving and now he's changed it all around fans are loving it the way he is um adding certain new moves to his repertoire and cheering yeah. up the fans getting ready for the RKO they love that shit they lose their shit when it's that time I just think I just think the guy I mean I'm not on Randy Orton at all you know I just think the thing that frustrates me with Randy Orton's character is he's a heel for 10 seconds, he's a face for 20 seconds, and then he's back to being a heel for 10 seconds. Um, I just think they should just let the guy be Randy Orton. You know, stop trying to tweak his gimmick and, you know, like the, the, like the authority thing, stop trying to tweak it because the guy plays fucking crazy better than anyone. Yeah, no. You know, I love seeing that guy go off on one. I love seeing him coil up. He has got probably the best finishing move and you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and taunt in the business today. Um, no the one can make a fucking crowd react the way he does, man, when, when he coils up for that RKO. Oh, they love it. They love it. Um, we got the end of this match. We got a nice finishing sequence. Um, now, Owens tried to set up Cesaro for a pop up power bomb. He jumps over. Here comes Randy Orton. RKO for out of nowhere. Now, at this point, I started to question whether. It, it you know it was right to maybe um, let Cesaro just take a quick RKO just like that. I thought they should have had some more reversals at that point and then into an RKO. Um, Cesaro obviously took the pin. Oh, uh, or, or I'm sorry, goes on to the main event. But um, yeah, what did you think about the finish? Do you think Cesaro and Orton should have had a little bit of more of uh, an exchange, um, a bit of back and forth before the RKO happened? I say so. I mean, like you say, this the arc. The arc he always always come out of nowhere, and that's exactly what the finishing move is. Um, I kind of didn't agree with Cesaro kind of getting it the way he did. Um, the match could have gone gone on for a bit longer, in my opinion. You know, I'd have, I'd have a lot of a lot more of a solid solid finish because it just wasn't solid. It kind of you had a good you had a good ten minutes, and then it just kind of went from that that and it just faded you mm. know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah um, but all in all it was a good match it was a great match nice triple threat oh, match yeah. Raw's been um, WWE's been pushing these matches out on Raw uh, nicely for the last couple months so um, and with the United States title not being defended it means that they you know someone else gets a look in to have a yeah. good match so um, that's always good um, what Shit, are they writing for Ambrose and Reigns right now? These guys coming out. How do you like my coffee? What the fuck are you talking about? I don't get it. I don't <laughs> get it. To be honest here, the old the old Wyatt thing. I don't understand. It's the same with Bray. Bray's been suffering since Cena. You know, highly. Mm. It's just it's just suffering. And um, they should never have split the the Wyatt stuff in the first place, in my opinion. But you know. That's, that's that, and that's a different mm-hmm. topic. I mean, but Ambrose and Reigns. Oh, I'm just, I'm, I just scratch my head because I'm just like, when are you going to wake up? I mean, for, for me, I'm not a massive Reigns fan. Mm-hmm. My, my missus would be looking at me now, giving me like the freaking evil some <laughs> help. You know? um, but I'm high on Dean Ambrose. You know what I mean? But this guy's fucking brilliant. I mean, all right, granted, I get, I get a little bit ticked off sometimes with his. Um, you know his wrestling style. I mean, you know it is, but it is what it is. The guy, the guy's, the guy's more of a brawler, and um, but he can wrestle, and that's what kind of annoys me is the fact that when if you watched him in uh, FCW, um, he didn't really come on TV in NXT, did he? N- uh, um, not really, no. But if you watched him in FCW and his, uh, you know, his feuds with. Uh, Regal. Uh, who was there? Uh, Regal, uh, Tyler Black, mm-hmm. who's obviously Seth Rollins. That guy is a fucking wrestler. You know, he's very much the same as the the, the guy we we don't say his name. <laughs> in my <laughs> opinion, yeah, yeah. You know, he's solid. He's, he's he he can groundwork. He can he can do the stand up. 
he can punch you in the teeth. The guy has got a style which he's, you know, he, he's got a mixed style. And I just don't understand how, you know, you can't write for him, you know, the way, the way that he should be written for. Um, but I just think all this is going to blow up into something that's going to make people just go, what the? Well, yeah, I think they need to speak for themselves. They need to realise that obviously Ambrose has got his own character. He can speak for himself. He's cool. Yeah. But Reigns needs to speak for him for himself to realise his own character. Mm -hmm. He needs to start talking himself. Um, he'll turn for Ambrose to save his career or to uh, enlighten his career a bit more. Um, I'd rather see a heel turn for Reigns if I'm honest. Ooh, okay, just to see what uh, happens there. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I I, I kind of like the I like what the place where Dean is right now, mm -hmm. um, making him a heel and making him almost to stay in the same, you know, same as Rollins type of thing. It just it doesn't work for me. I think I'd rather see Reigns turn heel. Um, you know, I re I really do. You know, kind of like uh, how can I put it? I just, I just think, I just think it, it work for Reigns. A Reigns, a Reigns Ambrose feud, but Reigns being the heel, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like all of a sudden Reigns realizes that he was always the guy. As much as he was the the beast of the Shield, he suddenly dawns on him: these guys were better than me, and he becomes, you know, a bit, a bit of a hatred. Yeah, he uses that. He uses. He that. uses that. You know, the, you know, all this obviously with. Bray Wyatt, you know, getting to him and stuff like that, and and it, and it could be the fact that Bray always goes on about getting in people's heads, that he actually succeeds with Roman. Mm -hmm. No, that's interesting. Very, very interesting. We'll see, I think we're going to see we're going to see what direction they take after SummerSlam. I think. Um, but um, next we had Bullbag TV. Um, I don't know if you know, but we call them <laughs> Bullbag um, for obvious reasons. Scrotum <laughs> FC. Um, but yeah, it, Daniel Bryan came out. Good to see Bryan, but I didn't think he added anything to the segment. I don't think Daniel Bryan adds anything at all. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm by no means um, a Daniel Bryan hater, but I'm kind of like I'm of I'm of the opinion if he isn't ready to wrestle, then don't put him on TV. Yeah, I agree. Just leave him. On. He's you already know, on top enough. Just let him do that. You know, don't bring him on TV because the guy, the guy, you know, when when, they, when I locked down him over there, I thought, Jesus Christ, you've lost some weight. Mm. Mm. You know, um, and when you read into the reasons, you know, I think he did an interview, didn't he, where he basically said he's fit and ready to come back to work, but he's had a concussion, and we all know what happens when you get a concussion. Mm -hmm. You've got to pass the you test, know, mate. You end up a, like you end up in the scenario with poor Cody Graves. Yeah. Ended up being Christian has basically almost been re is re well basically is retired He's now isn't he? Yeah. Um, through a concussion, you know. I, I understand that they obviously they treat they treat it the way they do now because obviously the Christian New Christopher Nowinski uh, things and stuff like that. You know, the, he does a lot for concussions and stuff like that and tries to take all this sort of stuff out of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think people like that have kind of, you know, you don't want to see people get brain damage. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you don't want to see that type of stuff. But, but it is what it is. And they just it, got, to, it, you got to, it, they got to take that on the chin as well. You know, it is what it is. You know, no one wants to see it. No one wants to see anyone in, you know, the positions where they've lost their memories and when it gets to a certain point in their life, you know, no one wants to see that. But God's sake, stop messing with what people actually. You know, used to deem as you know wrestling, and and you could even say sports entertainment now, but they've taken that much out of the business. How often is it you see a DDT used? Yeah. You know, a DDT is only used by one person, and that's Dolph Ziggler. I mean, I mean, have you have you seen Dolph Ziggler pull a DDT off? I would stop that guy using the DDT. <laughs> 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 you know, but yeah. everything is just gone. It, it's all it's all just become invisible mm -hmm. I definitely have to agree with that man and it's a shame it's a shame um, so after that um, Ryback returned um, which was obviously some kind of a ruse because they put out some picture with Ryback's knee looking absolutely fucked so um, you know obviously that was maybe a work for us um, maybe they rushed him back I hope not 
But the IC title needs some push, just like the US title. And I, I always said that it should have gone to Damien Standout in his old role. Let him have it for a fucking year. Um, say that he's too intellectual for anyone to take the belt off him and just ooze the heelness. But I don't know what's going to happen to this title now. Um, what have they done with Standout? Mm. They, that they guy that. was hot property man with the Miz. Yeah. You know? They, fl- they flopped it, mate. They flopped it, but hopefully they come back with something different. I hope they do, because um, he's 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 taking a short straw, man. He's taking a short straw. While every week we still get to see the ball bag on TV and fucking, oh. you know, exactly. Um, right. How's so, that guy still got a job? Lord knows. Because I mean, he's, he he's got he's, he's got some he's got some effect in terms of the media and all that kind of stuff, but um, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, anywho, it bores me. The, the ball bag, yeah, ex- that's what I was going to say. The ball, ball bag, bag bores me, so the boar bag. So, um, <laughs> let's go on to something else that kind of um heightened our senses a bit. Summer Ray, put the accolade on to Lana. Jeez, <laughs> what happened there, man? Jeez, um, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. It's where it's so frustrating because of like you know, you like you see bad against. The Bellas and then you see and you know all this divas revolution going on, and then you're kind of like looking at Lana and Summer Rae, and you're like, oh, well, some things don't change. You know, <laughs> they need <laughs> listen. Things. They need. They, obviously, we've got we've got was it um, Jimmy Jacobs? I don't know whether he's in the NXT creative or he's in WWE creative, but one way or another, someone needs to shake some shit up. Obviously, it's been happening, but there needs to be a little bit more of a change to certain things, um, and that obviously. I mean, this feud, it's done some good for Summer Rae, obviously being in there. Done some kind of good for Lana. I mean, it's opened up um, Rusev's character a little bit more into a, a funny side. But obviously they're doing this because Sigler's going to probably return tomorrow night on Raw. Yeah. Um, Ziggler, I think Ziggler needs to go elsewhere. I think he needs to go elsewhere. I think he could be big in Lucha Underground. Um, and I think he could definitely, be big yeah, in definitely the same sort of uh, Johnny Mundo type of thing, isn't he? Mm. You know? And I reckon he could be big in New Japan as well. But he, yeah, it's just frustrating with Ziggler. You know, it's frustrating. That guy could have match match of the year every year for the next ten years, and yeah. there's no one that can argue with that. That guy, that guy is the hardest worker in the he, WWE. Look at no AJ now, man. Look at AJ yeah. now. AJ yeah. is the best wrestler in the world today. Yeah. And he's gone, left the mainstream and gone to do yeah. in the he, he should just exactly. go. Um, all right. Uh, Neville versus Barrett. Barrett jobs in a minute, right? Uh, he, it's definitely time for him to go back to BNB. I just, I just, I just think bad news. Barrett needs to don don the cape again mm-hmm. and just that's just that's just go freaking kicking ass. You know what I mean? It's either that or reform the Nexus. Oh, no, no. I think he should go no. on his own and just, like you said, kick ass. Just stop bull hammering anyone everywhere. Someone walks out of their locker room. Boom! Yo, let's just I've see got him, some bad news for you. Let's just see him punch people in the face again and then finish him with Wasteland. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Let's go back to what made freaking Wade Barrett, Wade Barrett. You know? Um, I'm, just, I'm just so frustrated with the whole thing. I, just, I look at it and I just think, what are you doing with this guy? <laughs> really, honestly. Okay. Whose idea was it to make him king? Oh man, I really don't know. But they wanted they wanted to make him push around with the fucking pushback R truth. Do you know what, right? It's it's almost like it's 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 one of these things that Americans kind of find funny. Let's make the Brits look twats. <laughs> you know? He's British, he speaks in a certain way, let's put a cape and a crown on him. You look what they've done to Seamus. No, they've done it with Seamus. <laughs> <It's face>. They've <laughs> done it with Seamus, they did it with Re- Regal. Mm-hmm. You know, was once time known known as the Lord, wasn't he? Lord Lord Regal, you know. But William Regal was superb, <laughs> oh. you know. But I just look about, I just think, you know, what 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 is the point of this? You know, what what are you going to gain as a company? What's the payoff? You know, why are you wasting a piece of paper on writing two or three freaking lines and a script <laughs> for this guy to do? Really, is it is it worth the ink on your freaking pen? You know, you might as well not put him on TV. If you ain't got nothing for no one, don't put them on TV. I yeah. keep saying, it's just a force of habit. They keep doing it. Yeah. Like, they were doing it with Big Show for ages. He never had shit to do. They just put him on TV, make him stand behind fucking the authority and just say dumb shit. It's like I have a perfect example here. Do you 
Jack Swagger's feud with Rusev. How over was Jack Swagger? Mm. You know, but it's almost like John Sw- Jack Swagger lost his spokesman, didn't he? Yeah. I think I think the guy had cancer or something like that. I'm not sure. Something happened. Um, but he lost his spokesman, and it's kind of like, what happened with Jack? You know what I mean? He had no one to talk for him anymore because it's obvious that WWE didn't like Jack Swagger talking because of his list. That's not his fault. But it'd be the same scenario with Brock Lesnar. If Heyman ditched Brock, Brock well, Brock's going to struggle to cut a promo, isn't he? See, I yeah, he'll you struggle. Know? I I reckon his promos will be funny as hell. You just imagine letting him loose. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. You know, but I'm not high on level if I'm honest. Stardust and Stephen Amell, this has obviously come out of it as well. Stephen Amell, um, he did fine when he came in the ring, jumped off, shows agility and so on and so on. The one thing about this that pissed me off, it's not so much the fact that it's Stephen Amell, because obviously what does he really bring? He's he's a Z-lister kind of, kind of thing. But yeah. it's he did okay. The thing that pissed me off is the build. You've got a one-week build for yeah. this shit. Where does Barrett come into What the hell? Like, yeah. they're carrying on like Barrett and fucking um, Stardust are friends. Where the fuck did this come from? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, you know, man. He's pulling Stardust out of the ring and hugging him going down the aisle. You okay? You okay? Really? Yeah, yeah, really? Exactly. Oh, I said it. I said it. I said <laughs> the ball back. You know what I mean? But what have we got to look forward to? Neville just beat fucking Barrett in a minute. I just, I just want the WWE to wake up, scrub all that fucking makeup off him. Take that suit off him and make him Cody fucking Rhodes again. For God's sake, man. Seriously. Yep, I, make I, I him agree. Cody Rhodes again. Give that guy the push he deserves. Give him the world title. You know what I mean? Because that guy is fucking brilliant. Yep. I have you to know? agree. I have to agree. Honestly. Either that man or pair, pair him back up with Sandow again. <laughs> you know? Ah, oh, man. All right. Let's, let's, let's move on. Um... Main event time, Orton versus Rawlins. Um, same old shit, I thought. Same old kind of match, of which until the end, really, when Rawlins kind of take, Rawlins tries to do a springboard off the corner, and basically takes a nasty RKO. Sheamus gets involved and um, tries to tease the cash in, as we do every now and again. But the question I have for you, Gilam, um, is will Sheamus cash in and win, or will he lose it? Do you know what I was, I was sat there thinking this last night? I was thinking, how funny would it be? You've got, you know, you've got you've got Rollins versus Cena, right? How funny would it be if he cashes in, right, Sheamus? Now this is this is an angle, a story, an angle of stupidity, and he pins Cena. He thinks he's won the world title, but he hasn't. He's won the United States. Yeah. That would fucking that would be funny. <laughs> that would be funny in itself, but it it won't happen. I mean, I kind of the money in the bank thing now kind of annoys me. And pass the money in the bank briefcase because to me, it's just it's a game. It's 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 a chase. You know, it's a chase chasing game. He comes out with the briefcase like, oh, is he going to cash in? Is he going to cash in? And he's like, he's literally saying to the referee, I want to cash it in. I want to cash it in. And you can't win on your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have to just count it to ten. And the referee's still freaking arguing with the briefcase. You want to cash it in? You want to cash it in? <laughs> and they're waiting for the guy to come out the back. Or they're waiting for someone else to do a running and stop the freaking briefcase being cashed in. And I'm just like, I'm fed up of it. <laughs> I'm fed up of it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it just doesn't make sense to me anymore, the money in the bank briefcase. It really doesn't. I think the best cashing I have ever seen was CM Punk's. Yeah. Which one? The you first know? one or the second one? Uh, the second one. On on Hardy? Yeah. Yeah. The second one. Um, it just, it does, it does, it's... Is it just me, or you know, uh, being this moaning fucking butcher six nine bastard? I always moan <laughs> about everything. Or is it just me, or is, it, is anyone? Does anyone agree with me that the money in the bank is just stale now? It's just stale. It's because they're not being creative with the teases. Like they're not being creative. They're just doing the same same kind of teases. You know what I mean? It's just like I mean, all right. For instance, I know it's, it's, it's no comparison really, or maybe it is, but look at the hardcore title, right? Look at when it was twenty four seven, okay? Yeah. And you would have people sneaking up on, pe- you know what I mean? You'd have people s- proper sneaking up and pinning, you know what I mean? Like, just, yeah, just be a bit creative with it, man. Like, you know, just all of a sudden come out the crowd or just something like they always, you always come that at certain. Like it just needs to be a bit more creative. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, I think this is the thing. He's just hit the nail on the head. There, I mean, 
the briefcase is the briefcase. It doesn't necessarily need... They don't need to be in the ring. You know what I mean? Mm. Just backstage, cracking with a chair backstage. I'm thinking, I'm cashing it in, get me a referee pin in there, and then... <laughs> you know what I mean? Type of thing. You know, some of the people are going, oh, oh my God. God, he just smacked me with a chair. Boom, pin him. Um, I, just, I just think it's, it's possibly on the wrong person. I'm not high on Sheamus at all. Oh, yeah, I definitely um, am. Yeah. I'm not high on Sheamus at all. I, I personally would have liked to have seen someone actually, even Randy Orton, take him on for the briefcase. I think he's going to lose it. I think he's going to lose it. I don't think he's going to... I think he's going to cash it in and lose. That's what I think. I, I Hopefully, anyway. It's um, just going to be stupid. It'll be silly to actually give him the title. All right. Oh, that's the end of Raw. Um, can I have your Raw rating out of 10, please? Uh, I was probably going to go with about a 6.5. Okay, I agree with that. I it was it was it was a bit. You know, I mean, it had good good in places, but it had a lot of bad. I, in thought, places I thought the two the two best matches for me were obviously. Uh, I would have to go with uh, Randy Seth, and then obviously Cesaro, Owens, and Randy. Mm-hmm, I agree. Them were the key matches. Um, we would go to Raw feedback, but we haven't got any because me like a Canuck didn't put up the bloody um, feed. So sorry about that. Uh, so we're going to go to a break. We'll be back with Shook's Funners. RIP SmackDown in 60 seconds where we try to talk a little bit about rebuilding NXT. And then my man, the Butcher 69, will be taking the 10 count. Also, track of the week, so don't you miss it. Hey, it's me, the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Net Carrier has many great products and services to increase your bottom line. Be sure to ask your Net Carrier representative about our hosted PBX. Call Net Carrier today for a free analysis of your phone bills. 877-255-7733. That's right. 877-255-7733. Call now. Let's get it out. It happens every morning. You watch Raw and then you react to it. 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Every single Monday, join Tony and Sarah, Harry Rogers, and Jimmy Christopher for the Raw Reaction Worldwide on the VOC Nation. The most polarizing personalities worldwide. This is the VOC Nation Radio Network. And we're back. Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast episode 125. It's your boy Kenny Killer here with Butcher69, David Gillam. Right about now, what we're going to do is we're going to take it to Shug Stunners. So, uh, Jobber of the Week. Jobber of the Week has to go to Wade Barrett. I don't want to do it, but it has to be done. This guy got jobbed out in a minute, and he's going to be the king. Fuck that, man. Sorry, Barrett. Um, move of the week move of the week has to be uh, the top rope um, RKO by Orton RKO out of nowhere as usual wrestler of the week who did I give wrestler of the week to you know what I'm going to give this to Gilam who do you reckon wrestler of the week should be Cesaro Cesaro my man Cesaro takes that shit down there you go I, I don't have no problems with that um, all right, RIP SmackDown is 60 seconds. We're going to talk about rebuilding NXT a little bit. Um, so, obviously, we've got th- the three females gone up to the main roster. Uh, also, Kevin Owens is up there. We have Z- Sami Zayn injured. We have Hiteo Itami injured. Um, and right now, we've got Finn Balor at the top. Um, and Kevin Owens is going to be on the, you know, on the main, obviously, he's on the main card. Uh, so, he's not going to be involved for much longer. How do we rebuild NXT back up to the heights it was um, a couple of months ago? It's a bit stale at the moment, so let's take let's take the the, the main um, NXT title um, kind of scene at the moment and let's, and work our way down. So, guys, I think personally they need to take a drive up to ROH and sign Adam Cole and Michael Elgin. Ooh. <laughs> I'm probably, Ooh. what's his name, Silas? <laughs> Silas Young. You know what I mean? Silas Young, just do the freaking right thing. You know, rebuild what you've taken away. Mm. You know? Um, I think, I think. I mean, after um, Owens, who can feud really with um, with Balor at the moment who's on the roster? Who's currently there. Um, yeah. I think the idea eventually is obviously for Itami to feud with uh, Balor. Mm. But currently, 
Uh, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm really struggling. The it's, only it's guy I can think of at the top of my head, honestly, is Tyler Breeze. Yeah, yeah. Um, only, and, and if anything, I, I actually believe that Tyler Breeze should only have the title anyway. Yeah, he is, he, no. it is definitely his. It is his time. It is. It is his time. Um, he's been left out in the cold a little bit. Obviously, he'll get Liger um, next week. But um, yeah, I think it's, it is his time. And if he, if they don't go for Balor and Itami, um and they go for, you know, Tyler Breeze winning it off of Balor, and they have a bit of a feud, and Itami takes it off of Balor, um, yeah. off of um, Breeze. Um, but yeah, they need to bring some other guys up there. Um, they've signed um, Uha Nation. He's there now. Um, I don't know what to do with Baron Corbin. Samara Joe is being shit for me. Um, I don't think he's he's, he's um, generated enough um, fanfare with the fans. Um, and I think I think they may go to Joe Baller and, and Joe be a heel. I think that probably makes sense. I, I mean, to me, Samoa Joe doesn't work good as a face anywhere, whenever he goes. Um, it just doesn't work for me with Joe as a face. It, he's got he's got to be a heel. You know, it, it worked for him in CNA. It worked for him in ROH. You know, it kind of you can't. I like. I prefer that Joe style where he's pissed off with someone. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that guy just he'll kick you in the face. He'll throw you around the ring. If you know, um, if you're him honest with Baron Corbin, it's not. I don't. How would you put it? That guy had a fantastic match with Rhino. Mm-hmm. And what I don't understand is why you go from a match with Rhino. And then they take you straight back to one minute matches. I don't yeah. understand that. Me personally, I said I said a while ago, I would I would put Corbin with Bray Wyatt. Mm, you know that? Oh, actually, that could work. I would that put could work. Corbin with Bray Wyatt because you know I think it gets him some time on t- time on time on TV, time on the main roster, but he's guided. Because Bray Wyatt can guide, you know, he's, he's, he's brilliant. I mean, it shows the fact that they put Luke Harper back with him, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I just think that would be brilliant, you know. And I'll be honest, I would have done that. I would have done that. Because he's just suffering in NXT, I'll be honest. He's suffering. Yeah. Um, so let's look at the tag division now, okay. At the moment, we've got Blake and Murphy as tag champs with um, Alyssa Bliss. Alexa Bliss, sorry. I'm still wondering who the equaliser is going to be for the Ford villains um, in, uh, in Takeover Brooklyn. Who do you reckon it's going to be? Um, it's got to be a surprise. I'd like to think it was some someone that's actually not on the roster. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it's like uh, your previous podcast, I think I'd probably have to go with Eva Marie. You reckon it's going to be Eva? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I'd have to go with that, to be honest with you. Okay, um, so we've got a couple of tag teams. Chad Gable and Jason Jordan look the part. I like them. Um, I like them, and hopefully, you know, they obviously might be trying to world greatest tag team two point. Gable's fantastic. Gable, yeah, he is fantastic. He's got it, Annie. He? He's yeah. got something, anyway. Yeah. Um, will his size be an issue? I shouldn't know. I should, I'd, I'd like. I'd, you know what I mean? I'd like not to think. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Why would it be an issue? Yeah. You know. What, are we in the bit? Is it, is it is it about wrestling? Is it about ability, or is it about the size of the man? I don't well, know. Ho- hopefully, it's about ability. But he's got something. Um, you know, again, he's uh, he's an Olympian, so um, he's got something. Um, and they work quite well, him and Jason Jordan. Um, we've got Enzo, Big Cast. They'll find their way somehow. But I love those guys anyway, man. I love <laughs> them anyway. I bloody love those guys. Uh, and now um, we've got Wilder, Dash Wilder, Scott Dawson as well. Um, they're coming up. So they got something, but the young bucks, man. Could yeah. you imagine? Oh yeah. Um, I'm waiting for. I think it's more about their attitude, then, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And I think that's why they've given a tryout to um, TMDK. I don't know if you know who they are, um, but they're called the Mighty Don't Kneel. Um, it's um, Hasten and Nichols from um, Pro Wrestling Noah in oh, Japan. Right. These guys are fucking sick, and they're they're stable. Um, the Mighty Don't Kneel. Just the name itself. Um, is is sick, and they they got they both of them got tryouts, and I'm hoping that they sign and they sign them. They're Australian guys. I hope they sign them because um, they're a really good tag tag team. Um, the women, uh, women uh, at the moment, it seems like Bailey's going to take down Sasha at um, Takeover. 
which is right. It's her. It's it's her time, and you know what other bet? Well, the rest of them's got to lie down when you go to the main roster. Yeah. So, um, but who will she feud with now? You've got Dana oh, Brooke. Like it's yeah. not a lot, um, but she can really. I mean, Dana Brooke's still green. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the problem. I mean, to me that you know. Some of these, some of these girls that are left on this NXT roster, they're almost like in the same standard as, uh, you know, some of the current divas, in my opinion. Mm. You know, yeah, some solid. of them ain't ready. I mean, I would like to see so them actually go to somewhere like Lucha Underground and sign some of their talents, if I'm honest. Mm. Mm. They, they've, they've got to pull it out. Obviously, NXT is a developmental territory, so we're going to expect green. That's what we're going to expect. And they need to build themselves, just like Charlotte, just like Sasha and them did. They built themselves up, and they used the performance center to their, the best of their ability. Um, I hope the rest of them take notice and do the same. Um, for some reason, I still don't know why they haven't signed Neva Bates. Mm-hmm. Um, Blue Pants. Don't understand. I still don't know why. Um, but... We'll see. Um, Jessica Havoc could have been something different, something good. Yeah. Um, and that could have been a nice, uh, what's it called, um, underdog thing for yeah. Bailey. Yeah. But um, we'll just have to wait and see what they do with that there. Um, but the, the future's bright for WWE in terms of the main roster. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they, you know, they keep the the clogs rolling, um, the cogs rolling um, in NXT. That's it. That's it. All right, um, we're going to go to a 10 count now, my friend. So let me just explain what you have to do. You've got three categories. You've got to pick A, B, or C. Then you're going to have 10 seconds to um, name as many answers as you can to do with that category. Right. Yep. All right. Yeah. So please pick category A. Ooh, let me just tell you, the top of the leaderboard at the moment is eight. Jesus Christ. Okay, so. All right, so category A, B, or C, Butcher? B. B, Okay. We have ECW pay-per-views. Now, Butcher, can you tell me as many ECW pay-per-views in 10 seconds in 3, 2, 1, go? Oh, my God. I'm buggered here. Uh, no. No, oh, I've, I've gone I mean, I've, all over the shop. Anarchy rules. Uh, there's one. Finished. Done. No, 10 no. seconds is gone. Got me. Wow. Got me. Wow. Wow, I did not expect that. Jeez. Honestly, honestly. Oh, it's, through me, def- um, me. it's a shame because the other two categories I think you would have done great on as well. Um, ECW is always uh, a spanner in the works. And my friend, you've just been counted out. Jeez. <laughs> I'll come back again. Yeah, you will. I'll make sure of it. Don't you worry about that. You just got to pick a next category and it's all good. But... Um, what I'd like to do now is the end of the show. I'd like to thank you, um, Gillan, for coming on. Um, I'm definitely going to ask you on again. Um, I'm probably get you on with the rest of the lads. Yep. Um, can you let people know where to find you on the Twitter, please? You can get me at PsychoButcher69 at Gillum1480. Nice. All right, cool. And can they find you on Facebook as well? They can get me on Facebook. It's David Butcher Gillum. There you go. Um, again, I'd like to thank you for coming on. Um, track of the week this week will be none other than Christian. Just close your eyes. And if you don't like that, then you're going to have a problem because the King of the Mountain says that's what it is. All right. Next week, uh, where we should have Darren Dyer on the show. We should also have the Cookie Cutter podcast himself, Michael Cook. Uh, and we should also have Billy the Mark Johnson. We're going to be reviewing the New Japan uh, G1 Climax Finals. Um, so make sure you check in with that. Um, and yeah, I will be, like I said, on the Badass Wrestling Podcast next week in um, Stateside. So make sure you check that out. Um, again, Don't Close Your Eyes by Christian is the closing track. And if you don't like that, you can choke on that slap nut. Woo! Go!